Hello everyone! Welcome to 7 Billion Humans! Uh, this is my first solo series that I've recorded in... Um, it's gotta be over six months at this point. Possibly even longer. In my life, a bunch of crazy shit's been going down. A bunch of just really crazy shit. <laughs> um, but it's better. And I intend to put out a vlog and talk about this in the next couple of days. But uh, for now, let's just get into a new game and we'll just enjoy ourselves. So this is called 7 Billion Humans. It's a sequel to a game that I played a long time ago called Human Resource Machine. And that game was about programming. And this game is also going to be about programming. So, in theory, this should be a fairly easy game for me. I guess we'll get in and we'll find out. So, I'm going to select my employee ID, and we'll see which person I am. I think... Oh, we gotta settle for a uh, sexy redhead that I just passed, right? I'll come back. There we go. Yeah, sexy redhead. This is definitely me. That photo looks just like you. Employee number one. That's also my name. <laughs> Here's my badge. Please proceed to the elevator. All right, and I guess this is probably the first uh, level here. I wasn't able to tell if that was a cutscene or not. Oh, it is a cutscene. Let machines do that for you. Are you a hardworking coal miner, truck driver, or coffee shop employee? Let machines do that for you. Uh, well, actually. Mm, tastes like progress. But aren't there any good jobs left for hardworking families like us? You'll never need to work again. Machines have provided unlimited free energy. Unlimited fast, clean transportation. Unlimited free, nutritious food. Mm, you're completely free to do whatever you want in marvelous modern utopia. But we want good paying jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Okay, creating jobs. You want jobs? You will have jobs. They will be the best jobs. Huge. Believe me, you have never seen so many jobs. Where can we get these jobs? Just show up on Monday. The machines have created enough jobs for every single person on the planet and the whole family to enjoy. I have a PhD in medieval French literature. Even the most useless skills can be put to work in the new office building visible from space. Congratulations, all seven billion humans on the planet. You're hired. <laughs> that's great. Ah, that's a Trump reference. That's, well, we all got through that. And I think we're all stronger for having gotten through that. Uh, cool. So I've already beaten level one. I didn't even have to do anything. I'm kicking ass at this game. Let's just go to welcome new employees in year two. All right, so I've already been employed for a whole year. You're late. Right. Everyone is already here. They're just standing, blinking, waiting for your instructions. This isn't just about you anymore. You're the boss of all these workers. They will do whatever you say. So let's just see how fit this workforce is. Please just have everyone pick up their individual green data cube and drop it again. Let's see those little arms put to good use. Yes, there's nothing like an early success to inspire confidence. Uh, tell your workers to step down one tile, pick up the green data cube, and drop it again. An excellent workout. So, I guess I'll do exactly that. And I guess I'm going to also be simultaneously giving all commands to the same people. So they're all going to do this. So, step down. And then I guess I have this little interface and I tell them which direction they can step. And there we go. So let's play this out. I did it! Oh man, I'm gonna show up to work tomorrow. I'm gonna get promoted twice. Yes, stunning work everyone. These workers are clearly experts at picking up and putting stuff down again. I wonder if I get the high score. Oh, this game doesn't keep track of high scores. That's right, it's not a Zachtronics game. Transport Squad, level three. We are moving through this at a hell of a clip. Hey guys up there, that line of data cubes is too far away to read. 
Please tell the workers to move the entire line of data cubes down by two tiles. Just sit it right there between those nice potted plants so we can see it a little easier. These glasses aren't just for looking handsome, you know? Yep, it looks like the premise is that it's going to be that we'll just command all humans at the exact same time. Wait a second, isn't this character me? Hmm, I didn't realize I have a doppelganger amongst uh my life. Cool. So we'll step down one tile, pick it up, and then we'll step down two tiles. And I wonder when this game will get hard. So <laughs> this is kind of reminding me of, um, it, it's, it's sort of like human resource. No, I'll just talk to this. Oh, that's more like it. Like icons on a desktop, deliver positioning is everything, unless you're bird, in which case you just throw the icons on the desktop and let the chips fall where they may. Um, yeah, so this is going to be interesting, I think, because the game Human Resource Machine was about programming on a much lower level using really hard and abstract instructions. And it looks like this is going to be a little bit easier to understand doing things like step and stuff like that. I just wrote a book on mindfulness meditation. Ah, that's a little bit appropriate. So important. I'll let you borrow it later. I would like to completely clear my mind and also the room. All data cubes and workers must be cleared away so I can concentrate. Workers, please pick up the cube data next to you and just keep walking until you exit the room through one of the convenient holes on the right side. What's at the bottom of those infinite holes? Yes, that's a good question to think about whilst meditating. You got a new command. Jump. Now your workers now will actually jump into the air. This is not one of those games. Here, this will tell you all about it. Okay, so jump statements are going to be... I'm just going to paraphrase it because I don't need to read this. So a jump statement will tell me a position in the program to jump back to so I can set up uh, repeating instructions in a loop. So if I just do a step to the right and then pick up and then I do step to the right and I just do jumping a jumping structure back like that, I will just keep running through those commands over and over again. So again... Yeah, you can see that all the humans are running through that. Uh, I thought this was going to be like a lower level thing where it was going to be more like Java, but it looks like it's still kind of stuck in this assembly-esque language. So, I am an ocean. I am an autumn forest. I am a sunset. I am hungry. Anyone want to get lunch? Anyone? <laughs> I like this uh, game's take on the automated future where everyone's completely unemployed and it it's up to robots to create work for people. I used to consider myself a lot more optimistic about uh, automation. Now I find it terrifying. Oh well, let's all ask ourselves a little question. Would you prefer an instant shrieking splattering doom or going to a really fun office birthday party? Well, now I have a new command to help you decide. Everybody, let's all take a look to our left and to our right. On one side, you have a nice data cube illuminating the way toward the office party. On the other side, you have eternal doom. Use your new if command to locate which side has the data cube and continue walking in that direction until you fall in the nice safe hole that will take you to the office party. Choose wisely. I'll see you there. So uh, an if statement is if I do one direction, I, I don't know. I guess I'm going to actually read about this one because it's going to be a little bit more different than what I'm actually used to. Uh, use this command to run certain commands in some cases and other commands in other cases. You can add conditions by clicking the dot 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 once the if condition is placed in your program. Okay, so if, if we have uh, to our left, then if it equals a data cube. Uh, okay, and then there's and and or. Oh, okay, so this will be a little bit higher level. I'll be able to do... Um, branches that aren't related to just jump statements. So if to our left we have a data cube, what we'll do is we'll take a step to the left, we'll pick up that, and then we'll take a step to the left, put it into a loop, and then by doing this, you see what we're going to do is we're going to step, pick up, step, 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 over and over again. In the else part of this if statement, we're going to step to the right, pick up the cube, and then do our steps that way. So these two uh, these two guys, or gals, they're going to go to the left and die. These two dudes, they're going to pick it up and go to the right and die. So, couldn't be simpler. 
Let's put our jump statement down and we'll just put in our step to the right and play it out. There we go. So the interesting thing about programming, yes, congratulations, it's truly really a feat of engineering. I'm not feeling like attending the party, but you guys have fun. The interesting thing about programming is that if this, there's been studies on this. If you understand jump statements and if statements, you basically can learn how to code. Uh, if you can't figure those things out, then you're screwed. So it's like, it's very interesting because in introductory level classes, you can kind of figure out who's going to actually be able to complete their degree based off of the first couple of weeks when they learn these constructs. So what I'm doing is I'm carefully explaining it so that because I know that those things are actually really hard for people who aren't familiar with programming. So maybe by watching this, you can learn how to do it. So just like this guy over here, I'm learning programming. In fact, I already solved this assignment for you. Well, sort of. The worker is supposed to go pick up the cube down below without falling in the holes, but something's wrong. So I'll allow you to fix that for me. Let's watch what happens together. Okay, I assume I need to debug this. The worker is supposed to go pick up the cube, fix it. You'll need to change or add one single command, but you're able to change more if you like. So now that I've seen that, I'm gonna run the program again and I'm gonna watch what happens here. But it looks like the, uh, what I need to do is I need to move, well, let's just see what happens. Let's run this out and then it'll probably become clear to me. Use this button to step through one line, one line at a time. Oh, okay, so they're showing me how to debug, basically. So if I just uh, keep tapping this, we will wind up at step to the right. If is equal to nothing, then we will uh, just keep going through this loop. So what this is going to teach us is about the OR command, where... Oh, oh okay. Um... I see. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to add an AND statement here. And what I'm going to check for is that to the bottom of us must be a death pit. So when this character gets to this tile here, the condition will be, let me just show you, and, be and below us equals a hole. So by doing this, this is only true if to our right is a hole, and or to our right is more ground, and to below us is a hole. So when we get to this square, that condition is no longer true because below us is a is a normal tile. So that'll break us out of this condition. And watch as you can see how that happens. So we check there, check there. It's no longer true. So we go down and pick up the cube. There you are. Uh, jump statements move the command to a different place. That's exactly what they do. You use jump statements combined with if loops or if to create looping constructs. So if a condition is true, then you go back. And then if when the condition is false, you then break out of the loop and you can go on to do unique commands again. So we have a, another level. I thought we were up to the cutscene already, but let's just do the, uh, let's do the level. Um, this place is a mess. The engineers left data all over the floor. That's what we tend to do. The people have no appreciation for style or art. That's also true. Okay, let's pick up all the data cubes and organize them into a light, nice line along the bottom row right between those useful arrows, but watch out for that infinite hole. What? How can you know where data cubes are? Or where infinite holes are? Well, it says here, remember your if command will illuminate the world around you. People say the world around me is a haze of confusion. And I guess this is a comment block, so I'm supposed to be able to write uh, things down, so. There you go. Uh, do I think smoking alcohol is cool? Hell yeah. That sounds awesome. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take steps down. And we're just going to... We're going to put an if statement. And everybody's at a different point. So I can't know ahead of time which person's going to arrive at which data cube. So what we're going to do is if beneath us is a nothing, then we keep stepping down. Once we're done with that, we'll then pick up the uh, the cube or the spot that we're on. And then we'll just do another if check. Uh, and I also forgot that I need to put a loop in here. So basically, 
If there's nothing, then we step down and then we check the if statement again. Once the if statement is not true, implying that there's a cube beneath us, then we break out of this and we pick up the cube and then we go forward again if what's beneath us uh, is not equal to a hole. So once we're at this point, we'll be at a hole and we'll want to stop stepping forward and we're going to put a jump so we just keep doing that check over and over again once we're at the bottom we then will do the drop command and this should work perfectly so everyone's going to step, step forward i uh i guess i need to do another step uh, oh, I can just change the pickup to be pick up the thing one tile in front of you. So you need, I guess you don't need to be standing on something to pick something up. Is Bert a programmer? Yes, I am. I uh, work for Amazon. So there you are. So everyone's there. We drop all the things and we're done. So I guess I made one little mistake here and that pickup should have been down instead of on the uh, cube itself. But yep, I am a programmer. I have been working as a professional programmer for uh two years at this point uh roughly maybe a year and eight months uh i am a sde2 so i'm not even a junior programmer i am a um mid-rank programmer uh and i hope to be senior relatively soon we'll see how it goes whoa now we're living dangerously really on the edge ha collation station all right excellent work your presence requested on the next floor uh, well, we have a cutscene to watch. I'm gonna watch the cutscene, and then that'll round things out for this episode. And we'll play more of 7 Billion Normies next time. Thanks for watching. Congratulations. You're doing great. I cannot believe how great you're doing. As your employee morale officers. We are here to offer occasional tips on how to keep your workers feeling delighted. For example... Come on up, Jeff. We find that workers appreciate an occasional confirmation of a job well done. You might say, congratulations, you're doing great. Followed by a gentle but firm pat on the rear. <laughs> that a boy Jeff. When I was his age, I was a refrigerator. Good work, everyone. You know how many salads wilted inside me? With enough teamwork and engineering, even a kitchen appliance can become a mid-level office manager. We're not just building data solutions. We're, We're building, building a family. family. Oh, that's very corporate. Oh, that's corporate. Okay, see you.